Hey eBay sellers, it's Suzanne A. Wells. Thank you for watching another video. And I am going to walk you through the shipping process. This is for either new sellers who are completely overwhelmed by shipping and not sure what to do, or maybe you've been selling a while but you think that you're missing something in the process and maybe overcharging, or you think you're losing money on shipping. I'll cover all of that. If you have not watched my videos before, uh, again, my name is Suzanne A. Wells. I have been an eBay seller since 2003. I'll put a link to my store below. I am an influencer in the eBay community. I have a blog that was started in 2007 that has 4.7 million hits. I have been on YouTube for many years. I have 16,000 subscribers. And I am a writer for the website about.com writing about eBay. So here's what I'm going to show you. First of all, please watch the entire video before you do anything. If you have just gotten a sale on eBay and you're scrambling because you don't know what to do, just take a minute, collect yourself, take a deep breath, and watch this before you do anything else. But watch the whole thing because there are exceptions to every rule, so I'm going to cover all of that. Now, learning to ship is just a matter of following directions. If you have not read any of my blog posts, watched my videos, taken my courses, um, you may not know that I, when I teach this information, break everything down to the very simplest steps. So that's where people get confused is they try to do too many steps at a time. If you just have a system and work through it, you can cover everything, just follow the directions. First thing, you must have a scale to do this business. Don't estimate, guess, or assume. Really, a scale is not an option when running an eBay business. You have to be able to weigh things, and I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. This is the scale I recommend. You can get it on Amazon or eBay for around uh, $20 or less. It's just called the Waymax scale. They go up to different weights. The one that goes up to 35 pounds is probably going to be just fine for most people. It is battery operated or you can use the, um, the adapter there and plug it in. You must figure out shipping when listing your item. And to take that even further, you must think about shipping when buying your item to resell. Uh, one thing I do when I'm out thrifting or at garage sales before I buy it, the item, I think, how am I going to ship this and do I want to ship this? So that's where a lot of you guys are getting into trouble is you're not thinking about this until after you've gotten the item home and it sells. And then you think, oh, how am I going to ship it? You need to think about that first. So you've got to kind of think the process in reverse. How am I going to ship this to the customer? You figure that out when you are listing. You will end up shorting yourself or overcharging the buyer. Both of these are bad. If you short yourself on shipping, that's going to cut into your profit. Um, you don't want to do that. If you overcharge the buyer, they're going to get upset. They could leave bad feedback, never buy from you again, think everyone on eBay is a price gouger, whatever the situation is. So this is why you want your shipping to be as close to the exact cost as possible for your benefit and for the buyer's benefit. If you don't know how to do calculated shipping, I have a video on that. I will put the link below. This video has been out there for many years. Uh, probably need to make a new one, but it's had 65,000 views. So it's an established video. It has helped a lot of people figure out how to do calculated shipping. So learn that. Next, you want to make sure you have the supplies you need so you will have them to weigh with the item. It's very important to weigh the item with the supplies you're going to be packing it in. Now you don't have to package the item. Just figure out what you need and put it on the scale and weigh it. So if you need a box with a lot of packing peanuts, 
stick a box on the scale, put some packing peanuts in there, and put your item on there just to figure out how much it weighs. So again, you do not have to package the item, just put the supplies on the scale with it so you can get the appropriate weight. You can use the USPS, which is the post office in the United States. I'm probably going to get some viewers from outside the U.S., so this is for definitely uh, U.S. buyer uh, sellers only. But you can use the post office supplies for priority mail only. They do not provide supplies for parcel select or first class or media mail. Okay, next you want to, uh, when using the post office supplies, there are some rules. So you may not turn them inside out. This is a, uh, <laughs> this is a very tacky shortcut and it doesn't work anymore anyway because the inside of these boxes and supplies are marked and it's going to be real obvious and the, the post office will not ship it, you will get it back. You may not cover priority boxes with paper or any other material. That is misuse of supplies. You may not do that. Um, it's not a good idea to cover any box with paper or other material because it can rip off during shipping. There's a lot of machines and a lot of handling in this process and the brown paper that people used to use many many years ago to cover boxes for shipping gets ripped off and then your box gets lost the information for the recipient is not on there your uh, return information is not on there so the package goes into the black hole of the post office and that means that you have to refund the buyer because the package is lost and that is your responsibility you may not alter flat rate boxes. You may not cross off flat rate. You may not use them for any other thing than what they are intended for. So if it fits, it ships, and you may not tape them together or cut them down. Use them exactly the way they are because they were designed for that particular rate, that the weight of that item. So you may not alter the flat rate boxes. Do not overstuff or shove too much into padded or cardboard mailers. There are a lot of people on YouTube that brag about how much they can cram into these mailers. That is not good business. These mailers can burst open. It's happened to me when I've ordered things. It makes you look very tacky as a seller and it's not an accomplishment to see how much you can shove in there. If it makes sense, do it. If it doesn't, then get the item that it makes sense to ship your item in. You may not ship hazmat items priority. I have outlined that in the document below. Um, there's a, two documents you can download for free that have all these rules in them. Uh, hazmat, I've got a link to what that means uh, through the post office. It's things like fragrances, things in aerosol cans, anything that could explode or is flammable, it must go ground, so you cannot ship that priority. You may not use media mail for anything except media. I've got a link to that below in the document that you can download. So you may not get clever and use this class of mail for anything except media. You are not required to use the post office packaging for priority. You can use anything you want except alcohol boxes. That's not allowed. Um, but you don't have to use the priority supplies. However, it makes sense to use them because the supplies are free. So you want to stock up on those and have what you need so that when you sell items, you have the correct supplies on hand. So again, grab the free document below for a list of commonly used priority supplies. I've got all the links on there for you. So if you're getting started and you don't know what to order, I've already thought that through for you and put links to the most commonly used supplies. You must use your own packaging for first class and parcel select. 
there is no free packaging for that. You can get poly mailers on eBay. Again, I put a link to that in the document below that you can download, print out, and keep by your computer for when you are learning this. Really, just do everything the right way. All these creative workarounds you see on YouTube about how to rip off the post office, um, they're, those are called violations. And what's going to happen is your customer is going to end up paying for that. So if you alter a box and it makes it through, uh, alter a flat rate box and it makes it through and the customer gets it, um, there may be a postage due sticker on there for your customer and that's going to end up in a negative feedback for you. So just do things the right way. It's not that hard. Now for the flow chart, I'm going to walk you through this. So if you are a more visual person, you can play this video over and over again, and I hope you will also like it. <laughs> um, but this is the thought process for basic shipping. Yes, there are many, many uh, exceptions to this, but this is the basic thought process. So this is what the uh, flow chart looks like. I have a link to that for you below. You're going to start by placing the item with the packaging on your scale. Does it weigh 15 ounces or less? If it does, then you will ship it first class in your own packaging. That will be usually less than $4. If it does not, it has to go priority. Your first thought is, will it fit in a flat rate envelope? If it does, does it make sense to ship it that way? That's the big question. Um, I've seen people put coffee mugs in these flat rate mailers. That is not a good idea. Do not put breakable candlesticks in these flat rate envelopes. That is not a good idea. Clothing, yes. A plush a stuffed animal, yes. A pillowcase, yes. Things like that. Um, the big question is, does it make sense? If it does, then use it either cardboard or padded, whichever makes sense for the product. Again, do not put breakables in these mailers. It is not a good idea. Okay, if it will not fit into a flat rate mailer, which you will already have on hand so you can test that out as you are listing your item, try a Tyvek. I have a link to what Tyveks are. They are the larger paper sort of envelopes that have fibers in them. They're kind of um, a little bit waterproof and they're strong and they don't rip. So will it fit and does it make sense? If it does, then great. Use a Tyvek mailer. Again, these are paper. They're great for clothes, soft goods, and the cost is calculated by weight. So if you're a clothing seller, you're going to use a lot of these and a lot of padded flat rate mailers and a lot of first class poly mailers. Okay, if it does not fit in the Tyvek mailer, you will have to use a box. You can use any box or a priority box from the post office, but pay attention to the flat rate box criteria. I'm not going to get into all the flat rate options right now. There are so many. Uh, so this is just the basic video for basic shipping. As you move along in this business and learn more, you can experiment with all the flat rate options. And most of the time, as you get into this business, you will develop a pattern and a routine and sell kind of the same things over and over. So you'll already know what size box you need for what. Um, so you can explore those flat rate options. Just pay attention to what they are so that you're using the right thing. So that's it. Um, I encourage you to share this video with other sellers who struggle with shipping. This is the number one asked question I get emailed and um, on my Facebook group is how to figure out shipping. So this should help a lot. Grab your free copies of the Shipping Basics and my Shipping Flowchart below this video. Um, 
this is the way I teach things. I break it down to the very basics and step by step the the old uh, expression down to the brass tacks for some of you older people. Um, that's how I do this. So if you're wanting to learn anything else, visit my website. I've got a lot of other tutorials there that are just like this and break the subject down into a very easy to understand process where you can follow it, you can play the video over and over again, that kind of thing. You can also talk to me on the phone. Uh, this image pops up on my website when you visit so you can schedule a call you can ask me a question um, I'm here for you and I will answer it may take me a couple of days but I will answer um, but you can talk to me and ask me questions so don't hesitate to do that so I hope this has helped you and uh, please share this video and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching and have a great day on eBay bye